Holy shit. Another mass shooting with injuries. Harper County, Maryland. Just got up checking out the day. It's already cracking. Uh, at about 9.06 this morning, a report came into the dispatch center from the Rite Aid Distribution Center of shots fired. Immediately, deputies, officers, troopers, other first responders uh, responded. Uh, we were on scene just in over five minutes. Uh, arriving law enforcement, fire and EMS units quickly uh, paired up together, uh, got into the building in order to render first aid where appropriate. Uh, treat patients and attempt to locate a, a suspect or suspects. At this time, I can confirm multiple wounded and multiple fatalities. Based on what we know right now, and again, very preliminary, the lone suspect in this incident is in custody and is in critical condition at a local hospital. It appears to be uh, a single weapon that was used, a handgun, uh, and there were no shots fired by any of the law enforcement officers responding to the scene. We do not believe that there's an additional threat anywhere to our Harford County community. I'm reporting live on the scene of this mass shooting, a multiple shooting here in Hartford County, just outside of Aberdeen. It all happened just after nine o'clock this morning at the Right Aid Distribution Facility here off of Perryman Road, outside of Aberdeen, off of Route 40, a huge facility where tractor trailers load up with materials that, and products that are taken to Right Aids up and down the East Coast. We believe the shooting happened at the support facility, which is adjacent to the main center in the Liberty Building. We've had reports of upwards of eight to nine people shot. Unconfirmed reports right now that possibly three people have been killed. WBAL TV 11 uh, I team lead investigative reporter Jane Miller has been covering this, getting a lot of the information that we're keeping you updated with. The victims from the shooting here taken both to Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore and to Christiana Hospital, not too far from here over the border in Delaware, as we're in Aberdeen, which is one of the last exits as you drive, uh, drive leaving the Baltimore area on 95, heading up towards the Delaware state line. I'm staying in the car right now because right, right behind me, you can see the response. Tactical officers all over the place, just about 100 yards behind me as I look over my shoulder, is this huge right aid distribution facility where a number of people were shot upwards of eight or nine unconfirmed right now and they say a number of those people have been killed in the shooting what I can tell you is that the, the response here I have seen from as you might imagine of course from the Hartford County Sheriff's Office fire and rescue but also the FBI the ATF and state police on the scene My wife told me that uh, her building, she works for Wave Bomb Shaw, is on lockdown and uh, pretty much nobody in, nobody out. And the shooting actually took place in a building adjacent to hers. Uh, she said, like, the Army National Guards down there, police, FBI, you know, it's really. I've been reporting live from the scene of this mass shooting outside of Aberdeen at the Right Aid Distribution Center off of Perryman Road here. It happened at 9.06 this morning. Harford County Sheriff Jeff Gaylor says that's when the first call went out that shots had been fired in the Liberty Building here at the Rite Aid Distribution Center in Hartford County. Within five minutes, officers arrived on the scene along with fire and rescue personnel. 
helping the victims of this shooting. All that he'll say right now are multiple people shot with multiple people dead. They're not confirming any numbers beyond that. When the officers arrived here within five minutes, they helped get the victims prepared so they could be taken off to the hospital. Victims going to Johns Hopkins Hospital, Christiana Hospital also nearby here in Delaware. Jeff Gaylor, the Hartford County Sheriff, also telling us that a lone suspect is in custody. Law enforcement officers arriving on the scene here found that lone suspect who had been shot. They recovered a single handgun and the sheriff saying that no shots had been fired by law enforcement when they arrived here on the scene. He said, quote, this is another tragic event here in Hartford County. When I arrived on the scene here, a huge presence of tactical officers going into the different buildings here at the Rite Aid Distribution Center as they get all the people that worked here that sheltered in the buildings. They are being taken out right now, being interviewed, and the crime scene investigation goes on here at the Rite Aid Distribution Center in Aberdeen along Perryman Road, the scene of this mass shooting today. I mean, this might sound a little hoarse, but I'm just glad it was only three and not 10, 15 people because it could have been much, much worse, you know. And you had heard that there were more. Right. I, initially, I heard it was several, but, you know, doing my own little investigating myself, you know, but by my wife and, and, you know, building close, she was able to get more information and, you know, told me there was only three, possibly four. And she's okay. Yeah, she's fine. Thank God, you know, they locked the, her building down, got everybody secure into one room. So, you know, she's safe. I'm just waiting for her to come out the building, come down this road so she can get... So I thank you for your patience. I take my and with that, here is our Sheriff Jeffrey Gaylor. Good afternoon. I'll start off by echoing, echoing what Christy just said. You know, thank you for your patience. I, I know everyone has a job to do and it's often tough uh, to try to get information. It's, it's hard on us trying to... We want to provide factual information. We want to be uh, aware and conscious that there's families out there who are hearing the most devastating of news that they could possibly hear. And we wanna make sure that it, it doesn't get out ahead of us uh, and before we have a chance to tell the families and we don't want them watching it on TV or reading it somewhere on social media. So I thank everyone for their patience and understanding. Um, I also have to, again, stand before bank of microphones and, and thank the allied agencies, um, so many of whom are here represented behind me, but our, our partners from the FBI, the ATF, the DEA, our, our federal partners, the State Police, Natural Resources Police, Transportation Authority, uh, Maryland uh, Department of Transportation Authority Police Department, uh, Haverty Grace, Aberdeen, and Bel Air are local municipal agencies who all responded uh, out here. Uh, and, and in fact, were some of the very first cars on the scene from the municipal agencies within that five minutes I spoke about earlier. Um, this is a great partnership that we have in our county, and, and unfortunately, we've been uh, impacted by more than our fair share of these types of events and uh, it, it, as tragic as they are we we know and we have seen that they can happen anywhere in a moment's notice and, and they do and they're devastating to the communities where they occur uh, a basic recap of what i spoke about this morning that at 906 this morning called dispatch uh, received a, a call of shots fired at the right house distribution center uh, located at 1501 perryman road uh, immediately, police officers from across the county responded uh, and were on scene in approximately five minutes. Law enforcement, fire, and EMS units uh, quickly paired up uh, and went into the um, warehouse area, to the office area, into the warehouse area to uh, look for the suspect and to look for victims and provide treatment where uh, appropriate. At this time, I can confirm that there are seven people who have been shot in today's incident including the shooter. Three people are suffering uh, from injuries which they are expected to survive. Uh, three uh, others are victims of our shooter who lost their lives here today. Uh, two at the scene and then one at the hospital. And the fourth loss of life is the victim, uh, the, I'm sorry, is the suspect, our, our shooter. The uh, Victims' names we are not in a position to release at this time. We still have to make notifications, and that's still a process that's ongoing. So we uh, are not prepared to release the victims' names. We will get them out as soon as is possible. Our suspect is a lone female suspect, age 26, uh, who had a last known address in Baltimore County. Uh, she has died at the hospital from a fatal injury, self-inflicted gunshot wound. It appears, again, as I said this morning, that she was uh, armed with one handgun and several magazines. 
uh, no shots were fired by any law enforcement responder. Our, our detectives are still working to establish a timeline, but at this time what we know is that the suspect was a temporary employee uh, employed here at the distribution center. She had reported for her work day as usual, and around 9 a.m. the shooting began, striking victims both outside the business and inside the facility. We do not at this time have a motive for this senseless crime in, in the investigation. Again, even though we're hours into this, it's still early in an investigation of this size and scope. But over the last several hours, uh, our law enforcement teams, again from all the agencies represented behind me, have been acti actively clearing and searching the 210 square foot facility. It's a massive building and that's only a third of it uh, and they've been through all parts of the one building 2100 or 2100 2010 square feet are all just right aid there's two other businesses that are equally big and our law enforcement officers had to clear that entire building uh, at the same time our detectives have been working tirelessly to interview anyone who was in the building or who might have information to help yeah. us further this investigation i believe a short while ago we tweeted out uh, the phone number again that's being answered at the dispatch center if there's people with information <coughs> that can offer us uh, related to the uh, incident here today to please reach out and so our detectives can be in contact with you. We are not releasing the suspect's information uh, at this time. I've heard that it's already out in the public, uh, but from our standpoint, the family there has not been notified. Um, and again, the investigation's early, so I will not be releasing that name at this time. Again, we have a family reunification center set up at the Level Volunteer Firehouse. And, and as I said, this is early on in this investigation. And as it becomes, as more information, uh, I just ask you to be patient. As more information comes available, we will share it just as timely as we can. I'm going to ask the county executive to uh, offer a few thoughts, and then I'll take a few questions with the caveat that if I didn't mention it, there's probably very little I can speak about. Yes, sir. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, as, I, as I mentioned this morning, we uh, uh, certainly thank our partners from around the state, Governor Hogan's uh, called and checked on us early this morning. I see Senator Cardin has arrived and Senator Cardin called uh, to offer his uh, assistance. So we, uh, uh, unfortunately, we are become accustomed to this. I want to reassure Harford County citizens that, in fact, although this is the unpredictable, we train for the unpredictable. Our Sheriff's Department, Fire EMS, all our allied agencies and our volunteers performed perfectly the day as they carried out their duty to isolate and bring this uh, incident to a closure quickly and safely throughout the community. So we drill for this and, and they performed at the top uh, of their game today to do that. We move on, we're going to re reunite the families and provide services to the survivors, uh, work with Rite Aid. Rite Aid's one of our original distribution warehouses in Hartford County and a partner that goes back over 20 years and so we will work with them uh, to rebuild and uh, bring their facility back uh, both through human resources and through capital to make sure they have a bright future here. So our thoughts and prayers go out to those victims. As County Executive, I am grateful for the men and women that stand behind me, uh, that when I listen to the radio risk their lives to enter a warehouse where they don't know if there's a shooter. They don't know how many victims they have, and yet they go in, uh, find the situation, and bring it to a closure. So to all of our public safety first responders, I say thank you to all of them, and to my partner, Jeff Gaylor, the sheriff. Uh, we unfortunately have perfected this, and I hope that we don't have to do this again uh, in the next 10 years or ever. But. We've got a lot of problems in this country to solve, to bring these kind of incidents to a closure. But thank you, Sheriff. Yeah. Of course, to the county exec, thank you for your, your leadership here in Hartford County. Uh, on behalf of your federal delegation, uh, our offices have been in touch, Senator Van Hollen and Congressman Rupersberger, <laughs> my office, uh, been in touch. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased that our federal agencies are working in cooperation with the sheriff and with the county and we know that the FBI has been involved, we know that ATF has been involved, the DEA has been involved. We just want you to know that we are here to partner with you to get as much uh, help as possible to understand what happened 
and to obviously reach out to those families, uh, the victims, uh, our hearts go out to them. As the county exec said, this happens all too frequently, uh, and uh, it's, it's a tragic situation. Uh, we are so proud of the work of our first responders, uh, the work that they do, uh, entering uh, places where there is incredible risk and danger in order to bring as much calm as possible. So we thank our first responders, and we want you to know that the federal team is here to work with the county, with the state, do everything we can to, to help in the investigation and to help the families. The suspect shot herself in the head. Ooh. No, we we do not have a motive yet, so everything is being explored. Um, that will be explored, but that is not uh, high. I wouldn't say it's high on the like a uh, possibility scale at, th at this point in time. Can you show whether whether she started outside and then moved inside the building? Yeah, it's our understanding, and again, you know, I, I'm going to qualify this with the fact that uh, this is early on in the investigation. Our detectives have so much work to do. But yes, we believe the shooting incident began outside and then moved into the uh, front of the building. You know How many people work there? Do not. How? We have seven people who have sustained gunshot wounds today, including the shooter. We have six victims, two of which are going to, God willing, they will survive. Um, and then three, uh, three mm -hmm. who have lost her. Am I doing the math right? Yeah. And one shooter. We have. Right. Yeah, seven, seven injured by gunfire. Four are deceased, including the suspect. Okay. Do you think it's not sure to say anything that anyone is aware of, and did it appear to be targeting a particular individual? No, nothing has been brought. I'll get it. But yeah, um, nothing, ha nothing that has been brought to my attention at this point. The motive, we are still trying to work on any kind of motive for it, so I don't have an answer for that right now. It, it, it was a single weapon, uh, a 9-millimeter Glock, nine millimeter Glock uh, which was registered and owned by the suspect. How did law enforcement take the shooter into custody? She was uh, injured by a self-inflicted gunshot wound on the floor. She was... Um, in critical condition from the outset at the time we responded. So she was transported to an area hospital where she has since passed away. How many people were in the building? No, none that we are familiar with and certainly none involving the suspect in this case that we're familiar with. It's a, it's a, the whole area here is a large business area, as you see. Um, so you know, the, the deputies and often our, our municipal partners and the state police are down in this area for different calls. Uh, obviously nothing to this degree, but nothing involving uh, this, nothing related to this incident or involving this suspect. I, I believe there were two, uh, perhaps three, but again, and, and as I said, I'm going to qualify things with the fact that we are early into the investigation. I, I do not know. How, how many people were in the building that you cleared, or how many people were there at the time of the shooting, roughly? Obviously, you don't, might not have exactly. I, I don't know how many employees are in, in the Rite Aid building. Do we have an idea? Um, throughout the three buildings that make up the complex, there were uh, probably more than 100. There were quite a few people. Uh, one third of that huge building is Rite Aid. So I don't know how many were in the Rite Aid building. I understand that Rite Aid employs private security, but we do not believe that there were any there at the time of the incident. She was a temporary employee uh, working her normal work day. I don't know what time that began, but re who reported for her normal work day today at the business. I, I do not have an answer for that. I don't know if she had key access or the employees. Uh, I, I don't know how the access works for Rite Aid. Um, that would be a question for investigators a, as they work through or, or the company itself later on. Do you think on the victim? 
um, we, we have ages uh, and, and the sexes. We're not going to be releasing that at this point. We will get that out through our public information officer just as soon as we can. We don't want people to see this and say, you know, a 26, and I'm, this is not the case, but a 26-year-old female, and then they, they, uh, they're they missing someone who fits that description. So we are not releasing any information as to uh, anything that could nail down the identity of our victims. No. Um, I, detectives may have at this point, but not that it's come to my attention. They were all in the Rite Aid building. We believe them to be all employees, but is that 100%? No, it's not. Do you believe the victims knew the suspect? I do not know how well they knew each other. She was employed there. Uh, apparently it was not her first day, so there had to be some, uh, some knowledge uh, of the suspect by the employees of that business. Uh, I've just been told that they do not look like they're life-threatening injuries. There's there's cameras on the property and inside the property, which our detectives will be, um, you know, have looked at and will be, obviously, uh, analyzing very closely to try to get us a better picture of everything that took place there. Sheriff Taylor, can you explain what you know of the security of the building? I. I I know nothing. In these few hours, I know nothing about how what, what security there is or is not. I, I'm not sure which hospital she went to. Local, uh, local trauma center. So, I don't believe it was Harford. I, I, I do not know. Both. There were there were people shot inside and outside the business. We believe. It began outside and moved inside. This will be our last question. Are you executing a search warrant currently on her home in Baltimore County? There are multiple addresses associated with the uh, suspect, so we are chasing all leads as any police department who uh, finds themselves in this unfortunate position of dealing with such a tragic incident. Um, you know, we will chase them as far until they end. Vehicles and homes, yes. That's it. All right. All right. Thank you very much. We will get something out as soon as we can through uh, Christy Hopkins and our PIO office. Thank you. We do not expect another full press briefing today. Any additional information that we have will come out via our social media feeds. We're hopeful that late by the end of the day, probably by your 11 o'clock news, that we'll be able to release the information on the suspect. Um, but we're not going to hold another press briefing today. Okay, thank you so much.